everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. K, and I'll be hanging out with you today. The topic of discussion for our little lesson is air pressure, which we're calling the weather machine, because throughout class for the rest of the week, we're going to be taking this idea of air pressure and tying it to weather. So just like if we were in class, I got a couple of objectives for you. These are the things that I need you to know or be able to do by the end of class. First thing is to be able to relate heating of the Earth's surface to the behavior of air masses. Second thing, compare and contrast low and high pressure systems, and finally be able to explain how air masses move. That's the stuff you need to know, so get out your pen and paper or your Evernote. Let's go ahead and start taking a couple notes. All right, first thing about Earth's surface. It heats unevenly. Now, I know this seems like kind of like a duh statement, but I want to state it again because it's central to everything we're going to do today. If you've ever walked outside in the summer, you know this to be true. Let's say you're barefoot, you go outside your house, and you walk onto black pavement, it's gonna be hot, it's gonna burn your feet, you will immediately jump into the grass. So the pavement is getting much hotter than the grass, even though they both have the same sh sunshine beating down upon them. So if you look, I've got a picture there of the continent of Africa, and based on where you are in Africa, things are gonna heat up differently. So like right here, this is all the Sahara Desert, so that's gonna be super hot and dry. Right here is the Congo rainforest, it's gonna be super hot and wet. If you go up here into Europe, this is going to be a lot cooler. So recognize that different parts of the earth heat up differently. If you're in the equator, obviously it's going to heat up a lot more. If you're in the northern or the southern region towards the poles, it's going to be a lot cooler. If you're in between those two places, your temperature is going to be in between. Um, usually areas that have got land are going to get warmer than areas that have got water. So recognize that different parts of the earth get, or well, let me backtrack on that. Different parts of the earth get the same amount of sun, but they heat up differently. This is important because air is crafted by the land that is below it. So air obviously sits on top of land. The What's going on with that land is going to determine what is going on with the air that's above it. So let's say, for example, you have got a desert. So we'll draw some sand dunes here. That's the desert. Our desert is hot and it's dry and it radiates heat up towards the air that's above it. So that means that any air that is sitting on top of this desert, this air pocket right here, is going to be really warm and really dry. Now let's say on the other end of things you've got, let's say, this is snow, even though it's green. You are in the North Pole. Obviously, this snow is going to be really cold, so it's going to radiate that cold up towards the air, and any air that is above that area, that tundra or the Arctic or whatever, is going to get really cold. So recognize that there are these big masses of air that match the land that is directly below them. And these big old masses of air are called an air mass. And you can think of them as being like a giant island of air that has about the same characteristics all the way across. These islands of air could be thousands of miles across and they could be a couple miles thick. But it's just one big chunk of air that has about the same characteristics. So if you look over on the diagram here on the side, you can see some air masses. So right here up towards, this is the North Pole right here, there is Canada. So right here they show you all this purple is a cold air mass. So that is several thousand miles of land covered by a chunk of really cold air. If you look down here towards the top of South America, you have got a warm air mass. And here you can actually really see really good how things heat up differently. Here's the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico. That's the Caribbean Sea. It's cooler than the land of South America. Here's a cold air mass. You can see all this blue right here. That would be another air mass. So just recognize that air masses are these really big chunks of air that are shaped by the land below it. The air or the land below this cold air mass is going to be cold and it's probably going to be dry as well. Over here, under this warm air mass, that's going to be ocean, so it's going to be warm and it's going to be wet because you're down near the equator. And the next thing I want you to know about air masses is that they rise and fall according to density. Now we've talked a little bit about how when things heat up they become less dense and when they cool down they become more dense. Same thing happens with air. When a mass of air gets warm it's generally going to rise up. When it gets cold it's generally going to sink down. So looking around the world you could say that right here these warm air masses that are found along the equator, those are generally going to be rising from the surface of the Earth up into the atmosphere. These right here 
around the North Pole. These are cold air masses. They're going to be very dense, and generally they are going to be sinking from the atmosphere down towards the surface of the Earth. So know that if air is warm, it's going to be less dense and it's going to rise. If it's cold, it's going to be more dense and it's going to sink. Which brings us to the idea of pressure systems. Now, you've probably heard, if you've ever watched a weather report, a high pressure system or a low pressure system. A pressure system is just an air mass that is rising or sinking. So those big islands of air that we talked about, as they heat up and rise or cool down and sink, they are going to cause pressure on the surface of the Earth. And you can break these into two kinds. You've got high pressure and you've got low pressure. So first one to know about is a high pressure system. And here's the major things you need to know. First of all, a high pressure system is generally air that is cool or cold. Now, because it is cool or cold, it is stable. That means that rather than rising up, air that is rising is known as being unstable. So this air is sinking down. It is stable air. And because it is cold, it's falling. So up in the atmosphere, this air gets really cold, and then it sinks down towards the surface of the Earth. Now, it is called a high pressure system because anything that is beneath that mass of air has greater pressure because this air is pressing down. It's falling down on whatever is underneath it. So it is known as high pressure. It is generally represented by big ol' capital H. The opposite of a high pressure system is a low pressure system, and it is opposite in all ways. A low pressure system is usually going to be warm air. Because it is warm, it is unstable, which means it's going to rise. So a low pressure system is generally going to occur maybe around the equator or up towards you know the Gulf of Mexico. This is just warm air that is rising up away from the ground and up towards the atmosphere. And because it is rising up, it is taking pressure off of anything that's below it. So if you remember, a high pressure system is cold. It's sinking down and pressing on our person. A low pressure system is warm, so it is rising up, pulling pressure off the top of that person. If we are going to compare and contrast those two real quick, I just want to make a couple of major points. A low pressure system versus a high pressure system in terms of the way that they spin because these things will rotate as they either rise up off the earth or sink down. If you are talking about a low pressure system, low pressure systems in our hemisphere rotate counterclockwise. This is why hurricanes all spin in this direction in our hemisphere. A high pressure system goes the other way. It goes clockwise. <clears throat> I've got this point here, a vacuum versus a bucket. You can think of a high pressure system as like a bucket that is being dumped out and when that air hits the ground it spreads out in all directions. Just like if you were to take a bucket of water and dump it when it hits the floor it would spread out. Same thing here. High pressure system that air hits the surface of the earth and it spreads out in all directions. And you can think of a low pressure system as being like a vacuum cleaner or a straw in a milkshake. Because it is low pressure, this air is rising up. <clears throat> as it rises up, anything that is around it gets sucked towards the middle and picked up with it. So in a high pressure system, everything flows outward from the middle. In a low pressure system, everything flows towards the middle. And as far as storms and stability go, low pressure systems have very unstable air and they generate a lot of storms. High pressure systems have got very stable air and they usually are associated with good, nice, clear weather. So if we're looking at our weather map over here, this whole area of the country that is under that high pressure system, they are probably having fairly clear, decent weather. Not many clouds, not many storms, not much going on. It's a nice day. And this is the last slide for the day. Um, Everything flows from high to low. I don't care if we're talking about osmosis in biology or diffusion or the wind. This makes sense if you think about it. If you've got an area of high pressure, <clears throat> that air in that high pressure system is going to want to move towards the place where there is lower pressure. So you could think of this as being like, I don't know, let's say you've got a bag of water. Squeeze that bag of water, punch a hole in it. There's high pressure inside that bag, so the water is going to shoot out of the bag towards the lower pressure outside. Wind does the exact same thing or air does the exact same thing. So here on our weather map we see we've got high pressure here, we've got high pressure here, we've got low pressure right there. So that means that as 
air moves around, these air masses are going to move in this direction because they are high pressure, so they want to move towards the area where there is lower pressure. You can think of it as flowing downhill. High pressure would be like the top of the hill, and it flows downhill towards the low pressure area. As that air mass moves, we experience that as wind. Anytime you feel the wind, that is air moving from an area where there's higher pressure to an area where there is lower pressure. I think that's everything. <clears throat> Make sure that you get notes on this video. If you didn't get all that, just go ahead and rewind and check it again. This is stuff you will need to know for class. So thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and we will see you again.